Here we're going to take a closer look of how to actually do operations with the concept of impedance. We're going to learn how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide impedances. And it turns out when we add and subtract, we're going to do the one way. When we multiply and divide, we're going to do another way. So when we add and subtract, we're going to do it as if they were complex numbers, because that's easiest. But when we divide and multiply, we're going to change the format of the impedance from a complex number format to a format that looks like this, where we have the magnitude and the phase angle indicated, because then multiplying and dividing is a whole lot easier. Because remember, when we divided two complex numbers, we had to find the conjugate, now multiply them together, and then divide by what we ended up in the denominator, it was a big mess. So we're going to find an easier way to do that. So let's say we have two impedances. C1 is 4 plus 3i, Z2 is 5 minus 6i. Remember, the real part is the resistance, the imaginary part is the reactance, either from an inductor or a capacitor. If the number here is negative, you can imagine this came from a capacitor. If this is a positive, we know it came from an inductor, so we might as well take the L off of there. We'll just do it in more general terms. Positive would indicate an inductor, negative would indicate a capacitor, so that's probably a better way to do it. So first of all, let's add the two together, which is fairly simple, and now subtract the two, which is fairly simple. We've done that before, but let's do it again. It's so we remember how to do that. So that would be 4 plus 3i, and we add to that uh, 5 minus 6i, and so that would be equal to 4 plus 5, which is 9, and 3 minus 6, which is minus 3i. Yeah, here I did put the i behind instead of in front. It doesn't really matter, so let's just let, write it like that. Sometimes we put the i in the front, sometimes we put the i in the back. It really doesn't matter, so whatever you feel most comfortable doing. Subtracting the two, so here we have 4 plus 3i, uh, that would be minus 5 minus 6i, and so 4 minus 5 is minus 1, and 3 minus a minus 6, that becomes a plus 6, that would be plus 9i. So you see, if we're going to subtract and add impedances, it's simply easier to put them in a complex number format and then just go ahead and add the real parts and add the imaginary parts or add the real parts and subtract imaginary parts from one another. So that's a lot easier. But multiplying and dividing, you probably don't want to do it like that. There's an easier way to do it. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert our complex numbers, Z in, in terms of complex numbers, to something like that. So we have to find, oop, there's an E missing there. We have to find the magnitude of Z and then we have to find the phase angle. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we want to find the magnitude of Z, we say Z1 is equal to the square root of in this case, it would be 4 squared plus 3 squared, which is equal to the square root of 16 plus 9, which is the square root of 25, which is equal to 5. So the magnitude of z1 is 5. For z2, that would be equal to the square root of, that would be 5 squared plus 6 squared, which is equal to the square root of 25 plus 36, which is equal to the square root of 61. And I guess that's the best we can do. I didn't pick my numbers very well, but that's, that's good enough. Square root of 61. All right. So now let's go ahead and multiply those two vectors together. Oh, wait a minute. We can't do it yet. We have one more thing missing. Uh, let's see. We need to know the phase angle. And so we find the phase angle. So phase angle for vector 1 is equal to, this, to the arctangent of the opposite side, x sub L, which would be 3, divided by r, which would be 4. And then for the phase angle for number 2, we take the arctangent of 3, uh, let's say no, here we have 6 and 5. Now, why did that put a positive 6 there instead of a negative 6? Again, it doesn't really matter. We do know when we draw these vectors or when we draw these impedances that in this case we have a positive impedance that looks like this. This would be Z1. In that case, we have a negative impedance that looks like this and that would be Z2, so we realize that this is the phase angle for theta 2, this is the phase angle for Z1, and notice that, yes, we're going to have a number below, or we're going to have an indication that it's below the, the uh, real part, which is the resistance right here, and there's going to be above. So again, remember, it's going to be a positive reactance for an inductor and a negative reactance for a capacitor. Okay, so this is 6, 5 equals 2, and let's get a calculator and find out what that is equal to. So we have 3 divided by 4, take the arctangent of that, and we get 36.9 degrees. And over here, 6 divided by 5 equals, take the arctangent of that, and we get 50.2 degrees. 
So we know this, the magnitude of the angle, but just realize that this is going to be negative, that's going to be positive, and we'll see that in just a moment. So let's now represent our two impedances, Z1 and Z2, in this format right here, rather than this format right here. So this will be the magnitude, and so for Z1, the magnitude was 5, and the phase angle was 36.9 degrees, and notice that it was a positive 36.9 degrees, so we write like this, 36.9 degrees. And here this would be, let's get a, an approximate number for the square root of 61. That's probably better to work with. So square root of 61 is 7.8. Good enough. So let's make that 7.8. Let's put it over here. So we have 7.8. And then the phase angle would be a minus 50.2 degrees because notice it's lagging rather than leading. So now let's go ahead and use those representations for the, uh, for the uh, impedance and multiply the two together. So Z1 times Z2 is equal to, how do we do that? Well, actually, pretty simple. It is equal to the product of the magnitude of Z1 times the magnitude of Z2, and the, the angle, the phase angle, will be theta1 plus theta2. We're going to add the two angles together. Now, in this case, of course, this is a negative angle. That's a positive angle, so let's keep that in mind. So in this case, that would be 5 multiplied times 7.8, and that would be 36.9 degrees minus 50.2 degrees. So minus because we know that it's a lagging angle. Oh, yeah, well, that's my thing. I should make that theta. I should make that theta right there. Where? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to mix them together. There we go. Okay, I was just notified that I used two different symbols for angles. I want to make them all the same, so I made them all theta. All right, moving on. So this is equal to 5 times 7.8 is 39. And on the angle, of course, would be 36.9 minus 50.2, 36.9 minus 50.2, and minus 13.3 degrees. So that's a really nice, easy way to multiply two impedances together. And dividing, it's even better. Because when we take Z1 divided by Z2, that is equal to Z, the magnitude of Z1 divided by the magnitude of Z2. And the phase angle is going to be theta1 minus theta2. So here we subtract the phase angles instead of adding the phase angles. But in this case, we would get 5 divided by 7.8. And the phase angle is going to be 36 point nine degrees minus a minus fifty point two degrees so there the signs will cancel out so five divided by seven point eight equals zero point six four zero point six four and the phase angle will be minus times the minus makes it a plus so that makes this uh, eighty six or eighty seven point one degrees eighty seven point one degrees there we go notice that now we realize if we're going to be Adding and subtracting impedances, we just put them in the complex number format and simply add the real parts and the imaginary parts together or subtract the imaginary parts if you're subtracting. When we multiply and divide impedances, then the preferred way is to turn them into this format right here with the magnitude and the angle. And so then we realize we just multiply the magnitudes together when we're multiplying and add the phase angles. When we're dividing, we divide the amplitudes and subtract the phase angles. And that makes it really easy to do these operations with these impedances.